Hey, it's Joel, 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, what I have in front of me here is the, the raised light, raised lighter? The raised lighter sword from Destiny, uh, modeled by my buddy Kirby across the pond. It's, it's a neat model, and I've always wanted to print it, and I, and I had an idea. The, the, the TiVo Little Monster is that Delta printer that I have, and I wanted to print stuff really, really fast, so I set Simplify 3D to 150 millimeters per second, and then I increased the speed to 250%. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! And it looks crazy, and I just wanted to see if stuff would print, and look at it. It printed, it legitimately printed. It's not perfect. I mean, you can see speed artifacts, a lot of um, echoes and ringing here when it has to make sharp corners. Uh, I did forget supports on this one. I did forget supports on that one. But overall, the test wasn't to make uh, a camera ready model. The test was to see if I could print things extraordinarily fast in order to make a multi-part model quickly and it looks like I was able to. So, how this works, there's these two metal rods. They each go through parts of the model, and they're at different lengths. So what I'm gonna do is install them, cut them to length, and then once I test fit everything, I'll use CA glue and my InstaSet to make it bond right away, and then I should have myself a cool sword. Let's get started. First, what we need to do is prepare the model, and the easiest way to do that is to get some sandpaper, a flat surface, and sand down any mating surfaces. By mating, I mean surfaces that are going to attach and be glued in the end. So we can start with the grip, and we just give it a good sand. And just like that, we have a fairly flat edge. And this means when this is flat as well, there will be more surface area for the glue to bond to, and it'll be closer, and it'll just be awesome. And besides, uh, Bill over at Punished Props, he does this, and it seems like the right thing to do. One of the reasons that we do this is, like I said before, for surfaces to bond well, but the other reason in this case is that the Tebow Little Monster printing at such ludicrous speeds does not complete top layers, and you can see it right there. So there's some spaces where the filament didn't cover, and it also means that there are jagged surfaces, and that's also why we're sanding this down. All right, I just did the last piece, and this sanding is specific to putting the model together. Don't worry, there will be plenty of sanding later once it's patched and primed and sanded multiple times before a paint job is given. Now that pieces are ready to go together, we can start to test fit the metal rods into their respective places. And that's done like this. You assemble the pieces, uh, in the order in which they are supposedly assembled. Here's the, the cool part. So this metal rod is going to go in here, but it's kind of a tight fit, and it looks like most likely this will be the last piece. You can see it only goes into that model just a little bit. So what we need to do is trim off a lot of this metal rod down here so that this can be attached, and the way we do that is by, well, marking it and then cutting it. So we know that it's going to want to consume, I don't know, a half an inch. So we can make our first cuts and we can mark them with this marker here. There we go, we have a mark on the metal. Let me tell you about the couple different ways we can cut it. There's two ways we can do it. We can use these heavy duty snips, which would get the job done, or there is a cutoff wheel on my Black and Decker uh, little spinny tool. So, let's try this. Okay, that seems to work. It's rather cool. Let's see that in slow-mo.
Well, that was fun, and uh, sparks flying in slow-mo, always awesome. A big thanks to my new Sony RX100V, shooting at what I'm told is 960 frames per second. I'll put a link to it down in the description if you're interested in a camera like that. But the bar is cut, it's now apart. Let's do a test fit. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It is a fit. This bar works perfect and everything should be able to glue in place just fine. Now we need to find out how long this next bar needs to be because this one isn't gonna cut it. All right, this is our starting point here. Oh, and here we go, look at that. We are so, so close. We just need to trim a little bit out. And it looks like this actually holds quite a bit. So it covers all the way up here. It actually consumes that much. So if we move it down, and then a little, I bet we could do it right there. Okay. The cutoff tool was fun, but as my assistant, Loud Josh, and I discovered, I don't believe my glasses are safety rated. And safety is important. So we're gonna use these snips. So Josh, would you help me here? Sure thing. Come on over. Yeah, right, right. No, 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 yeah, no, no. No, no, a little higher. There we go, right there. Do it. Bingo. I closed my eyes, that makes it safe, right? And now we have ourselves a fully supported sword. At this point, all we need to do is glue it together. All right, I've got it all disassembled. Now what I need to do is start putting it together and adding in my CA glue. The handle is a little offset and it's going to be the first, well, it's gonna be the first one that I glue together. Here's what I think I'm going to do. I'm gonna add some glue in the hole. I'm gonna put glue up here. I'm gonna slide this on top and once I have it set just right, I'm gonna hit the sides with some of that Instaset to hopefully cure the sides. So the glue in between still will need a little bit of cure time, but the glue on the sides that oozes out should harden and hold it in place. That's the goal. So we'll put some glue in the hole. There we go. This goes in. I'll we'll put some glue right around here. I'm gonna put this down. All right, move that out of the way. So what I wanna do is line this up. That's pretty good. Gravity's helping. I can hit the sides. And if everything went to plan, it should be locked into place, which it is. I'll assemble the rest of it, and we'll take a look at a finished, at least being assembled, awesome Destiny sword. All right, there we go. Uh, I only glued myself together three times, maybe, but we now have ourselves this incredible sword, thanks to Kirby Downey. It was never meant to be cosplay perfect or screen ready. I just wanted to verify the TiVo little monster could produce models of a decent quality while the floating extruder did the truffle shuffle. Well, I've got some work to do on this. It's cool, but you know, I gotta let the glue in between set. I've got some sanding, some priming. I don't know if I'll keep it. I don't know if I'll give it away. At any rate, this is freaking awesome and I love it. Total print time on the TiVo Little Monster. Each of these parts, Simplify 3D, was uh, estimating five hours. Each one took about an hour. The green and the white parts took four hours because they were just a little bit more detailed. All in all, I love it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not and ring that bell to be notified of when cool stuff like this is uploaded. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon and YouTube Red and for everybody that lets the ads play. Don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, swords are cool and high five. No, 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 no. It was a cut it joke, but it's not for you to cut. Well, I was gonna leave it, but then he looked at me and said, cut it. No, I know, because it was a, yeah, cut it out, right? Oh my gosh. Good. Uh, okay.